Okay, once again, officially welcome to the Monday webinar. Again, great to see everyone, and uh, and yeah, Doug, we're happy to have you back with us. Good, good to see you all. Welcome, guys. Um, okay, so just a quick little reminder: when you go to the website, I always have to mention this, and then the other detail here, you can get a free trial, and it's a good time to get a free trial because it's the beginning of the week, which is why I always remind everyone on this webinar because you get the whole entire week to see how we trade and what I look at, and you know, and so on and so on. So if you go to daytradersfx.com and click on Start Now, that will take you to the page where you can get a free trial. Remember the top one is for the live trade group and the other one is for just access to all the posted trades in the website without the live group. So one's a little cheaper than the other. Uh, and remember for a limited time right now you can save some pretty decent bucks uh, by getting an annual membership. Uh, so you click on that, that'll take you to the annual membership page. That'll just be up for a few more days. I was going to leave it up <coughs> excuse me, for like two days. And then uh, I just kept getting emails and requests and purchases. And so basically I've been talked into leaving it there for just a little bit longer. So I will for a bit longer. Uh, but you can save some bucks with that one. So that's there. That's good. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. So let's talk about what we have going on this week. We're looking at a bunch of pairs. Some, some key topics uh, for us. Number one, pound. Anything pound is a big deal. CAD, we happen to have a CAD pair, anything CAD is a big deal, and Australia, we're watching some Aussie trades, kind of, and there's some big Aussie news this week, but it's not really a big deal, I'll be honest, uh, so, uh, because we don't have any really great, great setups right now on too many Aussie pairs, I mean, we've got some stuff, and we'll talk about it, and so on. Um, so, okay, uh, Adrian, that's, that's a good idea, definitely a good idea. Okay, so as far as news goes, uh, nothing too crazy for the rest of the day uh, today. A little bit of, uh, we've seen a little bit of New Zealand news so far. We've got a little bit of Aussie news, uh, business confidence uh, in about two hours or so. Um, but when we start getting into Tuesday, a little bit of manufacturing, production numbers uh, for the UK. Wednesday, the FOMC meeting minutes. That always gets things going. There's always interesting things happening there. Likewise, on Wednesday, we have Draghi speaking, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, and then Wednesday, we have employment numbers for Australia. So remember, for any of the Aussie pairs, or, or excuse me, for uh, all of the Aussie pairs, uh, this will be a big deal. But we don't really have any amazing setups on the Aussie on any of the Aussie pairs right now at least for what I'm looking at so uh, but if any of you are currently trading some of the Aussie pairs uh, just remember that Wednesday is going to be a, a pretty big move those employment numbers uh, usually move things pretty big and we'll probably have a bit of a live event for this one and just uh, see if we can put a pending order there and just do a simple news trade so we'll see how that goes um, but going back to the topic of of big stuff uh, with the UK, we have uh, the bank rate, the, the interest rate for the UK will be announced on Thursday if there's a change, if there's a hike, if there's a reduction, which that would be so incredibly unlikely. Um, and that's a huge deal. And, and we have the rate statement as well. So this is all where, you know, where the pound pairs get a little bit scary. The setups are pretty extreme. So, so when that typically happens, it's pretty rare for... Uh, you know, when everything gets so overextended, it's so overbought or so oversold, when we start running into some of those uh, central bank announcements and interest rate announcements, even if the announcement makes the, the, the currency run further in the direction of overbought or oversold, um, usually it's not for crazy amounts further. It's, it's more of kind of a spike out, and then for odd, weird reasons, uh, we see uh, big retracements in the direction of a correction from the overbought or oversold. So hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, basically what I'm saying is this UK news should help pound dollar shorts, pound uh, Swiss franc shorts, and, and pound yen hopefully shorts. Uh, because all those pairs are so overextended that it's time that the news uh, kind of comes out and helps. One thing that's kind of a big topic here with the UK as well is the recovery. Everything's looking so great. Everything's so good. Um, but it's it's kind of a very well accepted fact now that, that the recovery is going really well in the UK uh, and that everything's going great. And I think it's pretty well priced into the currency now. 
And so that's where we're going to start looking for some of these corrections. Even if the recovery is amazing, it can't just go straight up. It's got to pull back, and, and uh, some of these pullbacks can be pretty extreme, and I think we're going to see some, some good ones on these pound pairs. And then, of course, for any Canadian pairs that we're looking at, we have employment numbers for Canada on Friday. So it's a big week. Safe to say it's a big week. Okay. Um, I really don't have anything to say about the euro dollar except for the fact that... Uh, it looks like it's it's kind of working on a uh, kind of an ugly head and shoulders pattern, uh, and we see a lot of uh, support down here. We've seen the last couple of months uh, the euro's had a uh, well, it's had a tough time to the point that it has not been able to get below uh, 135.80 area. So I'm still watching this. If we start getting below that 135.80, it's not too far away. I mean, we're talking 30 30 ish pips away. Uh, we start getting below that. Uh, and I think we might have an opportunity to, to ride some of that momentum down into these lows right here, um, uh, minimum, you know, and I'm not even super interested in something like that. I'd be more interested in moves down into uh, what we can't even see on that daily chart super easily. Uh, start, starting to head into some of these further lows. Remember, uh, we still have some big miss pivots way, way, way down there. Um, and so I think there's a good sell-off opportunity on the euro dollar, but I don't really have any amazing setup at the moment that I really care to talk about or even look at. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see where things go. Okay, here's where things get interesting. Uh, pound dollar is looking uh, very, very uh, fantastic. We've had some topping outs here. Uh, we had this exact high uh, at about 171.80. Uh, and that, that was the highest point, but it's really had a tough time around this area. Uh, we've seen the pound dollar really consolidating around 171.50. You know, a little bit above, a little bit below. Here's 171.50. So, so almost the entire last week we had we had a little spike up right here, and then most of last week, uh, starting uh, uh, what would that have been Tuesday or so? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, the pound dollar just kind of hovered around that that area. It was 30 or 40 pips above and 30 or 40 pips below, but it was really just sitting around 171.50. Uh, so, so that's I, I saw that and I thought, okay, this thing might be a little more ready to go. Finally, uh, a couple of points to take into account. We still have not touched the 200 moving average number one. Uh, number two, we finally are now 100, just about 185 bars out from the 200 moving average on this one hour chart, which is great. Um, the four hour chart is, is not a crazy amount out, but it's, it's finally enough that it's really a threat now. 111 bars out uh, on this uh, four hour chart, and then the daily is just, is just ridiculous. The daily chart is so far out there that... Uh, that that it's it's just it's ready for a decent size retracement. We're 275, or excuse me, 270 bars out. So if we see a recovery on this pound dollar and we see it starting to run down to moving averages and lows and pivot points and so on, we have some big pivots down here. And I honestly, I don't think some of these pivots are going to get hit too terribly soon. In fact, it could be several months. It could be. It could be towards the end of the year. It could be the first part of next year. It could be the pre-summer run next year. I don't know. Those are a ways down there, and uh, it seems like it might be a while before the pound gets there. But uh, some of the levels that I do like a lot, uh, as soon as this guy pops up, here's a missed pivot at 16900, and I think this is a super, super good target uh, for us to be aiming for is 16900. So I'm keeping an eye on that. Okay, um, so anyway, I'm looking. Uh, uh, I'm looking at this this whole setup here, and and 16900 is is our target. That's what we've got to be shooting for on this pound dollar. 170 is a is a great area as well. There's going to be some good uh, some 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 good support around that area. There's there's about that 170 area. Lots of consolidation there, but I think we're going to be able to get down to. Uh, 16900 and so that's what we're going to be shooting for now remember we're looking to add some positions some of us uh, uh, we got short pound dollar quite a while ago and some were hedged and some uh, had to take a loss a pretty small loss you know 30 30 ish 35 pips somewhere around there 
Um, but for those of us that are hedged and for those that got stopped out and are looking for re-entry, we're, we're both on the same page here. We're looking to add a short to this pound dollar. So what I'm really liking here is you can see that we're just shy of 171.40 and we have this high up here at 171.80. So we're about 40 pips from that high. Um, I like getting into the pound dollar around 171.50. I think we've got a good opportunity uh, at 171.50 area to risk, again, to risk about 30 pips. I think if we uh, uh, just put our stops above this high, if it breaks that high, we probably don't want to stay in it too terribly much longer, but it's running up and we're a good chunk out from the 200 moving average. Uh, and so, so it's it's just a great setup. So, anyways, looking to short uh, pound dollar one seventy one fifty, maybe sixty area. We might give it a little bit of a shot there, but I think one seventy one fifty is a great area to get in and target that one uh, at least one seventy. But like I said, I'd like to hold on to one sixty nine hundred. So that's what we're looking for on pound dollar. Um, and and the other thing is, remember when I ran a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of interesting things about miss pivots. Um, typically for, for pound dollar, most weekly pivots never went more than, uh, there were some that went a good long distance, but the average was like uh, like eight or 10 weeks, I think. And we've got a couple, we've got multiple missed weekly pivots here that go back uh, several months now. And so there's a lot of things pulling on this pound dollar and to say the least, it's ready for a little bit of a correction, a little bit of a recovery to the downside. So. Anyway, 171.50 is my, my area, and we're going to have stops above 171.80, and let's ride this puppy down. Okay, uh, Aussie dollar is still giving me nothing uh, to mention at all, so I really just don't have anything to say about that one. Um, okay, dollar CAD, we talked about this dollar CAD uh, on Friday morning when we were watching non-farm payroll and, and, uh, and so on. Uh, excuse me, Thursday morning, uh, we're watching non-farm payroll, and we talked about it again Thursday afternoon, and uh, I hope everyone had a good chance to close your hedge um, at or around break even. Uh, if you did not, fear not, uh, because the dollar CAD, we're, we're long dollar CAD, remember, uh, the dollar CAD has made a nice little run up and it's making a nice little recovery. Uh, currently, it, it found a pretty good bit of support down here uh, around this 106.20 area. Uh, so currently, we're about 60 pips uh, off that low. Just 60 pips, that's nothing too crazy. So if we could get around 30 pips of retracement, I would be very interested in adding more positions to this uh, dollar CAD. So 106.50 area is what I love uh, for adding um, uh, more longs to the dollar CAD. Uh, you can see right here, uh, if we look at this four hour chart, we're a pretty good little distance, 120, just about 120 bars out on the four hour chart. Uh, the one hour chart has just hit the 200 moving average several hours ago, um, but we, we, we've got some good levels to be working with. We've got some missed pivots back here and a whole bunch of uh, uh, interesting levels that I think can get hit very, very soon. Uh, I think we're going to see at least 10, probably 10800 sooner than later uh, on this dollar CAD, and so we'll be totally ready for that one. So again, 106.50-60 area is great to get long and let this puppy just roll on out. So let's, let's be looking for that uh, with a target of around 1. Um, we, we, we could play it a little bit conservative and say 107. Uh, 75, uh, 10800 area, right in that general vicinity is what I'm looking for on dollar CAD. And again, I think the news is going to actually help us uh, in this whole area. So as the employment numbers come out for Canada towards the end of the week, or at the end of the week, we should see a nice little help there. Um, I don't have anything too crazy fantastic on this Euro Aussie yet. I do like this big falling wedge that we've seen here on this daily chart. And it's breaking out, and we're not super far from that low, I guess 150 pips from the low of the month. Um, but besides a price pattern, it's not really, uh, we, we had a little bit of something going on here uh, on this four hour chart, how it was, you know, it was pulling away and making a nice little run, and it's just recently hit that. Still have a missed weekly pivot up here at about 146.26. Um, but otherwise, there's not much of a setup besides strictly a price pattern. So that's where I'm saying I'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines with some of these Aussie pairs. 
Uh, same thing, pound Aussie. Uh, it's just kind of you know, it's just kind of where it is and not giving us a whole lot. Aussie New Zealand, uh, same thing. We were looking for a couple of things on Aussie New Zealand, like uh, this little uh, neckline kind of double bottom area here for a head and shoulders pattern. Still watching that on Aussie New Zealand, and this will be something to keep an eye on going into, you know, further into this week. If we start getting below about 106.50 uh, area, we could see, you know, a bit of a bigger move down on the Aussie, Aussie New Zealand. But but it's you know it's it's barely on the radar so uh, we'll keep an eye on that level especially as the employment numbers come and this could be a great spot to have a pending order just below this and you know catch some of that that run there's a little over 100 pips um, before we get back into that low and so uh, I, I definitely will be watching that 106.50 area uh, with the employment numbers coming um, and um, our Euro CAD is, uh, is super interesting. We're already long dollar CAD, and so getting long Euro CAD uh, feels a little a little imbalanced. Um, but it could be uh, a great trade if you're not in the dollar CAD, or if you're loving your dollar CAD and you want to get in some more. Uh, I do like this, and I'm probably going to finagle a way into this trade sometime this week. Uh, we have a great setup. We've got a nice little falling wedge here going under the daily chart. Uh, otherwise, the daily setup's not crazy fantastic as far as moving averages and so on go, but the falling wedge is looking great. And we've got a couple of missed weekly, daily, and, and a current monthly pivot there that needs to get hit. So there's lots of reasons for this to head higher. Um, and not to mention the four hour chart looks absolutely fantastic. Remember this almost hit the 200 moving average, but it didn't. And that almost hit was 133 bars back, uh, but the actual last uh, uh, major hit there was 265 bars back on the four-hour chart. So this this Euro CAD is is well well ready to make a nice move for it. Um, you can see it's made a pretty good run up this week so far. Uh, it's it's about 90 pips off that low. Uh, I will be watching this this week and looking for some retracement and looking for. Uh, uh, possible, excuse me, possible entries probably down around or just below 14500 to get long. And we're going to be looking for some of these upper targets like 14650 and 14700. So I think we've got a, a pretty easy, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a pretty easy shot at the monthly pivot at 14700. But but I think at least, especially if we get in at, at around 14500, which is right here, if we just trade it up to that that weekly pivot from two weeks ago, that's 165 pips. So that's not a bad little run. I'll be pretty happy with that. Remember, we're in summertime, and so we don't quite expect as many, uh, uh, you know, huge movements as we look for going into summer. So we're in summer, and we're going to be doing a lot more of this 100 and 200 pip kind of stuff, which is still good. I'm happy with 100 or 200 pips, but um, but we're not going to have quite as many of the uh, you know four, five, 600 pip profit targets. Uh, but that's okay. Those will come, and those will be setting up, and, and so on. So anyway, uh, around 14,500 or just below that is uh, a great area to start getting long EuroCAD. Yes, exactly, Adrian. Yep, summer is definitely range trading for sure. But there's some great setups here, and uh, we just kind of got to uh, uh, survive through them, and, and they'll be great. Um, pound CAD is looking interesting. The Pound CAD made this big move down about two weeks ago, and then it's just been kind of consolidating here. Um, it's still crazy overextended on the daily chart, but it's, I don't know. I, I actually don't think I even like the Pound CAD anymore. Uh, I just keep watching it. And it just, I don't know, I don't know. It's it's not uh, top of the list for uh, for pound pairs right now. I like it, but it's it's just not giving us what we need. I'll tell you what is getting pretty interesting though, is the euro pound pair. Uh, this has been getting very interesting. We had a long position here at 79, uh, 70 area. We got out of it with a little profit. Uh, which was good because it kind of keep pushing. It kept pushing down, and we got this low here of 79.15. Uh, I think we almost got to 79.10 there, about 79.15, 10-ish area, uh, and it's starting to bounce back up. Remember, Euro Pound has 
Uh, some nice missed pivots up above. There's a, a current weekly pivot around 79.55, not too far from current market price. Uh, but we've got, uh, we've definitely got at least one weekly pivot and a monthly pivot and several daily pivots um, that have yet to to have been reached here on this uh, on this euro pound. Um, and we've got a nice little pull away from this 200 moving average. We're about 90 bars out on the daily chart, which is a big deal. And the four hour chart is like 200 plus, I think we're, we're quite extended here, uh, 260, about 265 bars out on the four hour chart. So both daily and four hour are crazy overextended. And then the one hour chart is working its way into that territory once again, it's, it's around 110 uh, bars out. So I'm going to be watching this euro pound. I don't want to get too heavily invested in uh, pound weakness, especially with central bank news coming up. So we'll probably limit it to one trade until the news hits and then kind of adjust it from there as far as with pound pairs go uh, or as far as pound pairs go. So uh, the euro pound could be a great opportunity to get long before the news hits. The pound dollar is a great one to get short. Um, and really those are kind of the two that I like the most right now as far as pound uh, trades go. Now, we do have the pound Swiss franc and the pound yen to talk about. So let's get to those ones real quick. But just remember, I like this euro pound and we're only, uh, again, we're, we're not far. We're 27 pips off that low and we've got some great upper targets here. Um, monthly pivot is, uh, there we are. Monthly pivot is almost 100 pips away from current market price. Uh, current monthly pivot. The next missed monthly pivot is 200, just over 200 pips. A weekly pivot, 250 pips. Um, uh, 200 moving average is currently 270 pips. And remember, that's a that's a big move for uh, euro pound because it pays a little bit more. Uh, so even though it's only 200 pips, it's almost like you know it's similar to a 350 to 400 pip movement on some of the other pairs. So it's a pretty good uh, uh, pretty good profit target to be watching for. So we like that one. Um, and then as far as other pound pairs, the pound Swiss franc is looking amazing as well. And again, I don't want to get too heavily loaded up with uh, pound shorts because, you know, obviously there's a strong trend. And if we're wrong, we're going to be big wrong if we have too many pound shorts. But but I've, I, I've got a great setup here, and I really like this whole setup on the uh, pound Swiss franc. You can see uh, daily chart, we're out 70 bars, which is plenty on a daily chart to start getting pretty interesting. Uh, we have several missed daily pivots and a nice weekly pivot down here at about 148.88. So that's 500 or nearly 500 pips away. So 400 pips actually. Um, and the four hour chart is just looking fantastic with a 260 bar movement away from the 200 moving average on the four hour chart. So uh, one thing that I'm liking here is I drew in just kind of a little smaller version of a rising wedge. We have this nice channel right here and I think this channel is worth keeping an eye on. Uh, absolutely worth keeping an eye on. But if we get rid of it and we look at um, at this rising wedge right here, uh, then it starts getting pretty super excellently interesting um, and, and starts giving us a really nice little setup. So remember, four hour and daily charts are overextended. We've got missed pivots down below and we've got this nice little price pattern. So. Uh, so I am liking this uh, uh, pound Swiss franc. So again, for the sake of not overloading ourselves with too many pound shorts, I think this is a great one. We're about 60 pips off the high. So shorting against that high is a pretty good little setup. Um, how far are we out here? The one hour chart's about 110 bars out. So daily and four hour look great, crazy overextended. And the one hour chart's decently overextended as well. So, so the pound Swiss franc is borderline becoming a, a you know, almost a no-brainer here. Um, but again, because of our existing pound dollar trade, you know, I'm not going to overload us too much. But I do like shorting this pound uh, Swiss franc uh, against these current highs of about 153.65 area, and we're not super far off of that. So some retracement, uh, a stop, you know, 15 or 20 pips above that high, and starting to short this at least towards the current weekly pivot, which would be uh, 152.80. So if we got a decent bit of retracement there, and maybe a nice 50 pip trade or more. Um, uh, that, that, that's a nice little setup, so I definitely like that one. So pound Swiss franc is good for some shorts, absolutely.
Um, and then just a quick look at New Zealand dollar. Uh, it's sitting at some of these historic highs. Uh, what, what high did we see this get to? 87, so still shy of the 88.40 high that, that goes back a few years. Uh, we got just about to 8,800, and it's really stalling out. Nice rising w uh, wedge, and it's broken out of that. We don't have a really great setup uh, on this one, as other than it's coming up to major levels, and it's you know probably going to bounce off pretty nicely. The four-hour chart doesn't look bad. We're about 113 bars out on the four-hour chart, and we've got that price pattern. So a big daily uh, rising wedge is broken, and we've got a nice mist. Uh, weekly pivot down here about 135 or so pips away at 89 or excuse me 86.14. Uh, so I do like uh, New Zealand dollar shorts. I think this New Zealand dollar would be a great opportunity to pick up, you know, again 100, 100, a little over 100 pips. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity here. So we're going to be watching for that. Um, and then um, and then the pound yen pound yen has hit the the weekly pivot for this week it's made a nice little rundown um, pound yen is getting very interesting on the four hour chart we really need the four hour or and or one hour to get really extended because uh, because this daily chart is beyond it's just beyond anything the daily chart's so crazy up there um, that we just need a slightly shorter term time frame to give us a good setup. And the four hour chart's getting there. The one hour chart's getting there. If this makes a nice little run up without hitting this one hour 200 moving average, we could have a great opportunity. But I doubt we'll see that happen. We'll probably see this spike down a little bit more, kind of reset that and keep going back on up. But that could give us a great opportunity as far as the four hour chart goes with uh, this setup. So the pound yen's on the list, but top of the list, uh, four pound pairs. Is uh, I like pound dollar and pound Swiss franc probably some of them uh, as as the two best pound setups this week, and then we're going to keep our our eye on the pound yen, and we're definitely looking for opportunities on the euro pound uh, to get short or excuse me get long on that one. So that's looking pretty good. So those are some of the setups that I'm looking for. Uh, basically, I love the pound dollar this week. I love the dollar CAD this week, getting long dollar CAD. I love Euro CAD, getting long Euro CAD. Um, and then I love trading into pound weakness this week. Um, as long as the pound, I, I really would hate to see the pound make a big push down uh, before the news hit, uh, the central bank news, uh, Bank of England news on Thursday, and then have it kind of spike up from there again. I'd love to see it go sideways or even head just a little bit higher going into uh, Thursday and then just give it a nice opportunity to tank from the news, uh, which they may or may not do, but I, that would be kind of our ideal setup. So. Anyways, I'll post the notes for members in the website uh, as far as everything we talked about. And then the recording will be posted shortly and give everyone a nice opportunity to look at all the setups we have and hopefully make a couple of bucks off them this week. We've got some really nice setups. I'm actually super excited about this week. We've been patiently waiting for some of these pound pairs for weeks, and I think they're here. So... Um, so anyways, that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to get this recording posted, and I'll take all your questions and comments now. Send them on over.